So I'll go ahead and transition to um, introducing our last activity of the day and remind you that tomorrow we do have another full day, same time, um, and you should have received a link uh, from your RSVP. So it will be tomorrow from 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time to 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, just like today. And we'll be having another uh, round of panels, a curator roundtable discussion where Dr. Dini Greger, um, Nancy Perloff, uh, Alex Martin, Gina, uh, Marcella, and Livia will be participating. So you can hear this rich discussion from a diverse perspective of curatorship and a keynote address by Dr. Eduardo Ledesma. So I'll quickly introduce the team behind the Transcreation ex exhibition before I pass this on. So Transcreation was curated by Livia Benedetti, Gina Cortopassi, Alexandra L. Martin, and Marcella Vieira. The website was created by Adriano Ferrari and the graphic design by Wallace Masuko. So without further ado, I'll pass the reins on to Gina and Alexandra to give us a tour of the launch today. Merci, Kate. Thanks, Kate. I won't be able to uh, speak in Portuguese, so <laughs> I'll do English and French. And uh, Marcela, if you want to jump in and translate, uh, you're welcome to. So thank you so much for attending our first day at Transcreation. So we will give you a guided tour of the exhibition website via video. And after the video, we'll give you a link to check the newly updated uh, work of Augusto de Campos and uh, the three uh, contemporary works that dialogue with this piece. Um, the artists are, some of them are already, already here in uh, the Zoom. So I see Rodrigo, I, um, I see, uh, I, I don't know if I is there too. Daniel Maycomb. Uh, I see Wallace also who created the design. Hi Wallace. Um, but before starting the guided tour, we'd like to thank uh, Figura uh, NT2 Concordia, one of the sponsors for today's event, specifically for the support in bringing this exhibition to life. Uh, NT2 Figura Concordia is a branch of Figura, a research center uh, dedicated to the study of the imaginary in its present and past manifestation, and a branch of the NT2 Laboratory, where I work. Uh, je vais répéter ces informations en français ma langue maternelle, comme vous pouvez le remarquer et l'entendre. Donc, je vous remercie euh, pour cette première journée à l'événement Transcréation. On va vous euh, offrir un tour euh, guidé euh, de l'exposition à travers une navigation filmée, euh, or what uh, Dini just called a playthrough of the exhibition. <rire> euh, après la vidéo, vous allez avoir accès au lien URL dans la fenêtre de clavardage. Les artistes sont présents, donc vont pouvoir commenter les œuvres, répondre à certaines questions. Vous êtes invité à utiliser le, la fenêtre de clavardage également pour euh, intervenir ou pour poser vos questions. Euh, avant de commencer, on voudrait remercier NT2 Figura Concordia, l'un de nos commanditaires pour cet événement qui a rendu possible l'exposition. NT2 Figura Concordia est une branche de Figura qui est un, un centre de recherche sur le texte et l'imaginaire à l'Université du Québec à Montréal et euh, l'une des antennes du laboratoire NT2 où je travaille. Donc, uh, without further ado, <laughs> Alex, you can start uh, the video, thanks. Um, so, welcome to Transcreation, a meeting place between languages, between temporalities, and between the various forms of artistic expression on the web. Transcreation assembles six works, which dialogue with each other around the theme of transcreation, a concept dear to Agosto de Campos' concretist approach, and highlights the poetic equivalences between words, letters, images, and sounds across languages. The artworks gathered in this exhibition explore the polysemy, expressiveness, and materiality of language through the mediums of hypermedia, video, or artificial intelligence. Come discover works by Daniel Scan, Rodrigo Dalcantara, Not the Dress, and three works by Augusto Chicampos, newly restored by Adriano Ferrari. The graphic design of the exhibition is done by Wallace Masuko, and Transcreation will be available online until October 29th. To explore, select the language of your choice on the homepage of the exhibition by clicking on one of the three titles. 
the artwork titles will appear three by three, and you can return to the homepage by clicking the initial TC for transcreation. Sit back as de Campos' kinetic poetry plays out before your eyes, use your mouse to tickle or manipulate a work, or upload image, images to dialogue with an artificial intelligence. You are now invited to explore, to play, to transcreate. Bienvenue au lancement de l'exposition Transcréation, que nous avons pensé comme un lieu de rencontre entre les langues et les temporalités, ainsi qu'entre les formes variées de l'expression artistique sur le web. Transcréation réunit six œuvres qui dialoguent entre elles sur le thème de la transcréation, notion chère à la démarche concrétiste de De Campos, qui consiste à faire ressortir les équivalences poétiques entre les mots, les lettres, les images et les sons à travers les langues. Les œuvres rassemblées dans cette exposition explorent la polysémie, l'expressivité et la matérialité de la langue à travers les médiums de l'hypermédia, de la vidéo ou de l'intelligence artificielle. Vous êtes invité, après une courte présentation de l'exposition, à découvrir les œuvres de Daniel Scan, de Rodrigo Daucuntara, du collectif Not the Dress, et trois œuvres d'Augusto de Campos, revampées et converties en HTML5 par Adriano Ferrari. L'exposition, dont le design a été créé par Wallace Masuko, sera exposée jusqu'au 29 octobre 2021. Donc, afin d'explorer Transcréation, sélectionnez votre langue de préférence sur la page d'accueil de l'expo en cliquant sur le titre approprié. Les titres des œuvres se révèlent alors en triptyque sur la page. Pour accéder aux œuvres, cliquez sur les titres et vous serez redirigé vers la page de l'œuvre au sein de l'exposition et ensuite au site externe de l'œuvre. À tout moment, vous pouvez retourner sur la page d'accueil en cliquant sur les initiales TC pour Transcréation. Observez les poèmes cinétiques de De Campos. Utilisez votre souris pour chatouiller et manipuler une œuvre, téléverser des images pour converser avec une intelligence artificielle, autant de gestes que vous serez amené à poser pour faire partie de la conversation initiée par les œuvres et les artistes. Ok, um, agora vou falar en portugais. Um, então, um... Bem-vindo à Transcriação, um oh. ponto de encontro entre idiomas. Ah, sem problema. Entre idiomas, temporalidades e entre as diversas formas de expressão artística na web. Transcriação reúne seis obras que dialogam com o tema da transcriação, um conceito importante para Augusto de Campos e seu processo concretista, e que consiste em valorizar as equivalências poéticas entre palavras, letras, imagens e sons entre os idiomas. As propostas artísticas reunidas nessa exposição exploram a polissemia, a expressividade e a materialidade da linguagem por meio de suportes como hipermídia, vídeo e inteligência artificial. Venha descobrir obras dos artistas Daniel Scan, Rodrigo Dalcântara, do coletivo Not the Dress e três obras de Augusto de Campos, renovadas e atualizadas para HTML5 por Adriano Ferrari. O projeto gráfico da exposição foi realizado por Wallace Masuko, Transcriação permanecerá online até o dia 29 de outubro de 2021. Para explorar a transcriação, selecione o idioma de sua preferência na página inicial da exposição. As obras de arte aparecerão 3 a 3 na tela. Para acessar as obras, clique nos títulos e você será redirecionado à página de apresentação da obra escolhida. Clique novamente no título para ser redirecionado ao site da obra. Você pode retornar à página inicial clicando nas iniciais TC de transcriação. Observe enquanto o movimento e poesia interagem diante de seus olhos na obra de Campos. Use o um mouse para manipular uma obra ou envie imagens para uma inteligência artificial criar a sua própria lembrança da exposição. Você está convidado a explorar, a brincar e a transcriar. Thank you so much, Gina and Stephen, for covering for me in the, uh, the other languages as well. I'd like to invite our artists and Wallace as well, who is an artist of the exhibition, but he, he doesn't have a piece of work. The exhibition is his graphic design. Um, Wallace is here with us um, and will activate their mics as well. And Rodrigo, who I can see here, Aya, I can see as well. Um, am, I, am I not seeing Daniel? And, oh, I see Meredith as well, and Daniel Scan. Um, anyway, Greg, let me know when their um, mics are 
Absolutely. You said Daniel Scan. I'm only seeing Daniel. Daniel. Scan, are we seeing Dan maybe? He, okay, if Daniel, if you're here, go ahead and give us a little wave, but we don't see you right now. And Meredith um, is here as well. So if you have questions, uh, si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à les poser dans le chat. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put, um, send them in the chat and we will um, ask and translate as needed. Um, please feel free uh, to um, ask. We invited our artists in our original call to, to work with Agosto's work and to, and to transcreate and to take that really into, into their own terms and what they, what they felt that transcreation could mean um, as, as a self-actualizing art form. So if you have any questions for them, go ahead and jump in. Ah, Daniel, perfect. Oh, it's another Daniel another Daniel. But, ah. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, Wallace, we have a question for you on the uh, typography of the website. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, but for in Portuguese, the thing is to say, for sure. Yeah. When do me convidaram? É o área me convidou para fazer o design. A primeira, o primeiro, a primeira fonte, que é a primeira tipografia que a gente pensa quando pensa na obra do Augusto, é, é a, desenvolvida pelo é, Glazer e que ele usa no Viva Vaia, que é a, a tipografia por, que no site está o nome do Augusto de Campos e dos artistas. Essa, digamos que é a tipografia icônica. Mas exatamente por isso, eu achei que ela não, de, não deveria ser a tipografia principal. Uhum. E sim, é, deveria estar em segundo plano. Ela tá, é muito importante, são dos subtítulos, mas a tipografia usada nos títulos, que são as grandes, eu pensei a partir do poema dele chamado Tudo Está Dito. Eu acho que é um poema também bem conhecido dele, onde você não... É, onde a tipografia que é retangular ela está tão é, aproximada que você tem um esforço maior de leitura de cada texto. E tem uma questão muito importante que eu acho... Assim, o Augusto ele tra trabalhou o espaço é, plano de muitas formas, mas tem algo recorrente no, em muitos dos poemas que me interessam tem uma verticalidade, então eu quis escrever esses títulos nessa verticalidade. Assim, quando ele faz a, as traduções do Cummings, é, é assim, mas muitos dos poemas dele, como tudo está dito, também. Então, na verdade, existem duas situações nesse título, que é cada nome, cada título, está em vertical, criando um, uma espécie de uh, retrato, mas os três juntos, as três línguas juntas, os, os vários títulos juntos, criam uma paisagem. Assim, esse jogo entre horizontalidade e verticalidade foi uma intenção. A fonte que eu estou usando aí, na verdade, é, foi feita por um grupo de designers colombiano, que chama Tangrama, a partir dos trabalhos de um artista recém-falecido, um art chamado Antônio Caro, um artista bastante conhecido, pop, e que trabalhou muito com texto na, na Colômbia. Tá? E, por último, a, a última fonte, então, essa fonte chama Frente Nacional, para os títulos, tem a Morro, que é uma versão dessa fonte do Glazer, não é a, a original, que a gente usa para os textos. E, não, e para o texto corrido, a gente está usando a Futura, que é uma das fontes mais usadas pelo Augusto no início da sua carreira e para todos os poetas concretos. Mas é isso. Obrigado pela pergunta. Bom, é... e a questão do... Falando em acaso, que foi um dos inícios das conversas de hoje, como, como você pensou é, o embaralhamento desses trabalhos? De apresentação, né? Está sem, tá sem áudio. Agora está como? Tá. Uhum. É, isso foi também um pensamento muito a partir da obra do Augusto, que sempre, né, eu acho que ficou muito claro na, na fala da, da Nancy Perloff e de todos os outros, quanto o acaso é muito importante. Quanto, por exemplo, quando o Edu falou em permutações, 
né? É, isso de uma coisa se transformar na outra, de uma língua se transformar na outra, de um texto se transformar em outro visualmente, isso acontecer é, era uma vontade que isso acontecesse no site. Então, o início é um convite para um jogo. E o que é interessante dentro do site é que esse jogo leva para muitas é, é, muitos trabalhos diferentes, assim, não só os do Augusto entre si, mas dos artistas que foram é, que, que foram convidados ou estão presentes o Rodrigo, o Dan e o Notre Dress, onde você vê que a, a relação do trabalho do Augusto, desses é, 70 anos de trabalho com a contemporaneidade, pode ser múltipla. Assim, assim como o trabalho dele uhum. é múltiplo, mas tem uma, uma visão singular, ele pode se abrir para um, uma enormidade de situações, uhum. influências e conversas na contemporaneidade. É isso. Tem uma pergunta para você também aqui no chat. Você levou então, os profilogramas? Está é, sem áudio. Desculpa. Deixa eu só... Está tá funcionando? Está tendo um eco. Desculpa, deixa eu... eu vou ter que desligar. Espera aí. Well, is it, uh, that's not a joke. Oh. Oh, it's a good thing. No, better. Okay. I have a. Desculpa. Agora sim. Se eu levei em conta os profilogramas, é... não exatamente os profilogramas, é que eu, eu, uhum. eu acho que o, o trabalho do Augusto como um todo vai criando essas relações entre a verticalidade de, e, e, e essa permutação, assim, e o acaso, eu não sei, assim, acho que a gente passa... Eu não levei em conta especificamente os profilogramas, assim, então eu acho uhum. que... É uma noção de quase toda a obra do Augusto de ter, assim, por exemplo, os poemas que a gente colocou na revista Rosa recentemente, que tem a ver com a conversa aqui, tem um, um poema que é pro a part, é pro do Chan, né, pro Marcelo do Chan e tá And what are you making? Uh, I'm briefing e que também você tem esse jogo entre essa verticalidade e o a mudança de textualidade, assim, mas não tem não Uh, sobre, especificamente sobre o professor Lugar, mas não, mas é que isso atravessa a obra dele. Obrigado. Muito obrigado, um, Wallace. Um, someone sent me, oh, they didn't send it to the whole chat, but I received it nonetheless. A question for uh, Rodrigo. Um, so, Rodrigo, and you you submitted for those of you who have, haven't had the, the pleasure of seeing it yet. So, you are uh, contributing a short film. But this is a, a film that's in a larger series, as, our, as the curatorial, curatorial text shows. It, there's seven videos total. So this person is wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the total project as well, and maybe the links between the individual videos. Sure. And Thank you for please having Please answer in any here. language you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question was in English or in Portuguese? Uh, they asked it in English, but uh, I think they can understand it, yeah, however you like. Yeah. Okay, I can also make a mix, maybe. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to be part of this project. And the Jurema Sagrada, Sacred Jurema, uh, is the fourth uh, chapter of this series, which is called the Syncretic Series, in which I work the idea of syncretism in a wider sense that's not only related to religion, então, eu trabalho a ideia de religião, é, de sincretismo para além da religião, né? E entendo o sincretismo como essa essa mistura de linguagens também. Então, acho que o meu trabalho ele converge é, com a ideia de transcriação do campus muito por aí, por esse canal é, da do experimentação e da do hibridismo mesmo, do hibridismo de linguagens. É, e na, na série sincrética, que é essa série de videoarte que eu tenho trabalhado, é, eu comecei ela em 2019. E 
inicialmente eu comecei ela num contexto de residências artísticas, então toda vez que eu passava para algum edital é, num espaço colaborativo, num espaço em que eu encontraria outros artistas, eu desenvolveria então um projeto a partir da experiência de residência. E depois isso foi se expandindo, até porque né, veio a pandemia e a pandemia mudou totalmente o sentido é, desses encontros também. Então, Jurema Sagrada ele nasceu em 2019 também, quando eu comecei a escrever a série. Então, é, a ideia é que sejam sete capítulos, atualmente são quatro, né? Então, Jurema Sagrada é o quarto. É, e o, os três anteriores se chamam Híbrida, que eu fiz na, numa residência no Espaço Esponja, em São Paulo. É, que é com a Ana Matheus Abade e com a VAF que é um coletivo de São Paulo que assume vive de astrofocos. Então, é onde eu vou misturando também é obras de outros artistas com as minhas, né, com os meus roteiros, com as minhas ideias. E Então, para mim fez muito sentido também esse trabalho com uma referência ao campus, né, aos trabalhos do campus, porque eu já vinha fazendo isso também, propondo esses diálogos com outros artistas contemporâneos, com artistas de várias gerações também. É, e a, o segundo trabalho foi Capicarã e o terceiro Sinfonia Lunatic também tem no meu site tem informações sobre esses trabalhos quem ficar mais interessado pode dar uma olhada mas eu basicamente crio mitologias contemporâneas a ideia é eu criar so in this Socratic series I create mythologies contemporary mythologies and the idea is to to propose a dialogue between different generations as well Uh, so I have worked with artists that are older, older than me and younger than me, and it's also part of the, the idea of the project. And to embrace the, the work of art of uh, different artists and incorporate them in my own narratives to create this uh, plural um, voice in my work, this collaborative platforms. And that started initially with artistic residencies, and now I am uh, opening the, this idea for collaborative practices in, in general due to the pandemics. And maybe I will just wrap up the discussion uh, by uh, talking about Jerema Sagrada, why it was born. And uh, so I, I already had the idea of um, creating Jerema Sagrada in 2019. So I started to to wrote to to write the the script with my grandmother Jurema and uh, Jurema is a name that is really common from Banda which is a Afro-Brazilian religion and a syncretic one a really syncretic religion and Jurema Sagrada also stands for a different uh, religion a really ancient religion in the northeast of Brazil um, in which people uh, culminate, people uh, do rituals with Jurema, which is uh, a leaf from the northeast of Brazil, and is a syncretic religion as well with indigenous religions. So it's a name that comes from indigenous background, but also was absorbed by Umbanda, by Afro-Brazilian religions. And, and Umbanda also absorbed the, the Christian saints and made a syncretism with the Orishas, the entities from Yoruba culture. So it's about all this um, transdisciplinarity uh, in the symbolic as well, and, and how it constitutes my ancestrality and especially my grandmother's uh, legacy. Thank you. Thank you for such a rich answer, Rodrigo. Thank you. Uh, we would like to uh, give um, that uh, we've left to uh, hear Aya and Meredith also under peace image for an image. Uh, hello, girl, I don't see you on my screen. Oh, I see you down there, Aya. <laughs> okay. Um, we wanted to hear from, me, from you uh, on the process of nourishing the GAN because uh, I know earlier um, it became so good and precise that the poetic possibilities <laughs> intended for the piece were kind of diminished or challenged. And I want to hear you about that because it's fascinating. And I know it's been um, an interesting and stimulating process for you too, working with the GAN. So 
and you can talk too about like the, the link with Augusto's piece because you wanted to take part in this exhibition. So I'm giving you all the space. Yeah. So I, I'm wondering, hello, I'm Aya and Meredith. Uh, together we Hi. collaborate as Not The Dress. And might it be possible to share my screen and do a live walkthrough as Meredith does some explanation of this uh, training of the machine learning algorithm? Is that good? Sure. Okay. You should, you um, let me know if you don't have the button at the bottom of sure. your, you do? Yes, I know I, I do have it. So let me Perfect. start the share. And then as I will go through the steps and give this small live demo, uh, Meredith can share a little bit. Okay. So everyone is seeing the, actually let me use the Chrome browser. So you see my Chrome browser image for image, there is the eye, yes. The all seeing eye that we know from the, I'm not gonna pronounce it correctly, but the piece ojo por ojo, the eye for an eye. Um, just in case, I, for an I, or for if people are not at all familiar, but it's a, a pyramid made out of the O. Oh, no, I'm not going to get it. Anyway, beautiful pyramid of eyes cut from magazines that really spoke to us as an inspirational image, but we decided to transcreate with this piece. So, uh, Meredith, I'll kind of hand it over to you to talk about how um, she has integrated a, a machine learning algorithm to be looking at uh, images uploaded by the visitor to the website and interpreting, tr um, translating those images um, either to image or to text. And we started out the first couple of iterations using different kinds of algorithms, uh, training them on different sets of images um, to give interesting results. Uh, but I'll let, in, um, as I upload and go through, I'll let Meredith kind of talk through what the process has been like. Uh, sure. Um, so we're really interested in this translation of the word I, right? And then going to the magazine, cutting out all of the eyes, and then creating this pyramid. So, you know, what is it instead of going to the magazine if we um, train a machine learning algorithm, a machine learning engine? who really, and, and again, is a particular type of machine learning engine where you have the creator that's creating an image, and then you have a critic that's judging whether or not the image is correct. Yes, how so, close of it to that input image, as you saw with my strange fantasy character is now being interpreted as corkscrew window with soap bottle screen and this wonderful kind of cascade of text. But anyway, Meredith, back to you because um, I'm going to keep going. Exactly. So, um, so then the goal for normal GANs is to have something as close to life as possible. But when you look at, you know, what we are really interested in, what we think is, is sort of the translation, the slippage, you know, it's never exact, right? So how, how do we, how do we introduce, and, and there, and it is a translation from the image and then the, the sort of learning what the image is by the machine learning algorithm and then and then outputting creating a new image from that or creating a label. In this case we we uh, generated the words. Um, and it's and it's and it's like sort of a three-part series, right? The first part is there's a white paper that describes how how this works, right? So then it's taking that white paper and bringing that in to a machine learning algorithm, generally in Python using this thing called Jupyter Notebook. And then it's a matter of taking that and translating that into JavaScript. So it can run quickly in the web. So it's like all, so it's like the, the machine learning, the GAN itself is being translated. Um, and then you can almost imagine the, the machine learning GAN as like the dictionary. And uh, the dictionary is being filled with all of the images and the labels that we're um, feeding in. Uh, and it's really interesting, right, to you, I, I sort of, um, you know, it's like you, you, as we're generating these pyramids, you know, we were joking earlier that we would, we would upload an image and we would be like in, uh, like it would say screen, soju, and we were, and uh, you could see what the, what was what was used to train the algorithm. And we're like, what kind of room are we in? We're in a Japanese room, 
Um, you know, it's very evocative. Like, what is the space? What is the space that this pyramid? Like, what is the space of this pyramid uh, created? Um, but we, I mean, we were just, you know, this image eye for an eye is so visual. It, you know, what happens when we make when this is a when this is generated by a computer with just with that anyone can create their own pyramid? Um, I. Yeah. Yeah, initially, as this, you know, even up to a couple of days ago, as you uploaded an image, the machine learning algorithm responded with uh, images that were somewhat similar. But as it was kept being trained and kept discriminating and discriminating more images, the result was so close to the original input image, it almost looked like nothing was happening. So we gave it a try with a different approach. We're like, all right, well, what about the description and how? Um, somehow the artistic tension between, I guess, uh, we heard the word polysemy uh, reference, probably not pronouncing it correctly, but referenced earlier with you know multiple meanings of, of each image and of each word. So even though we I had uploaded that image of that to us is quite obviously an apple, I described it as apple when I was uh, searching with the web for that image, but here it is as a Maraca planetarium spotlight spot. Um, and these water bottles interpreted as shoji window screen, this strange um, little video game character is a corkscrew, a bottle, a window. So as we are iterating upon um, this and it's changing out different elements of the algorithm, it is responding um, quite differently. But we're, we're actually quite pleased with this um, very recent change. And I appreciate also the uh, curators with their patience with us. I was commenting this morning to the other curators as well that this this kind of like hiccups that you were running into was also like very de Camposian to like republish your own work with a different version of it as well. So it's just like it's a happy accident that is uh, it's it's so interesting. Um, we have one uh, we have one last question actually from Nancy Perloff, and then um, and then I will close out the the session today because we've been going for a while. However, we will download the chat, and we have your contacts from the RSVP links. So if you ask a question that was not addressed to any of our speakers, to any of our artists today, we will make sure that they receive your question and that you can then um, get a response from them. So Nancy, um, I don't see you on my screen. Can you activate your mic? Ah, there we go. Thank you. And, and please bear with me because this is all very new to me, but totally fascinating. And I just wondered if in a few words you could give us or give me a little bit better sense of the criteria, the parameters that go into this transcreation, specifically of Olho por Olho. Um, slippages you mentioned, but if you could just explain to me what basic parameters or criteria are applied through machine learning to this very uh, distinctive transcreation? So the first is um, the image that is uploaded. So that is interpreted as, um, that's, that's, um, that's the first parameter. The second parameter would be um, the trained machine learning algorithm that itself uh, has a number of parameters built in, namely all the images that are used to train. So there's sort of like this guessing game, like what is this image? Um, we're gonna feed in this image. Um, we're so we're gonna this feed this image, we're gonna words. label it. And then we're gonna use that label to pull out an image from the machine learning uh, GAN. And then there's another algorithm, there's, there's noise uh, that we, for now, is, it's, it's, um, it's, an, it's uh, sort of like a, pertub a ter perturbation. Um, and it sort of introduces a little serendipity into the machine learning algorithm. And um, I'd be happy also to go through like the Jupyter Notebook at any time, it's super clear how it all works. Um, but that is just, a random variable, but you could imagine also turning in the uploaded image into making that the randomization factor as well. So using that twice. But those are the those are the three elements. Yes, yeah, so essentially it's about describing what is seen, trying to find a label that is accurate, and then based on that label, generating images. If that helps answer the question. Where's the thing? 
My quick apologies. I realized I, uh, I skipped over your question from earlier. And since Daniel is not here with us today, I'm, I am going to take the time to briefly show you, walk you through his, his amazing artwork. Um, oops. X. Sorry, Alexander. I think he is here. He's just using other surname. Ah. Because he waved no, no. Daniel. I know that's a no, different it's Daniel. Not, no. It's another one, yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry. He, I saw he waved <laughs> and I thought I saw, yeah, it I was saw. maybe. <laughs> All right, so this is ex text Muscaci Campos, um, um, a mosaic work, really uh, an artist book, a digital artist book of a uh, work by Agusto Campos, this index of Musica de Invencao, excuse me. Um, and it has never before been published in anything other than Portuguese. So this is also the first time that this work is, is accessible to those of us who are not Lusophones or not fluent at least. And in the work, Agusto makes, hundreds if not thousands of references to different composers and so what Daniel has done it's really an amazing inventory of every single reference that is made and you are um, as a spectator as a as a viewer you're invited to choose your different so you like here I can choose Scott Joplin and I'll pick one of the references and I'm going to have a YouTube video that shows up that I can place wherever I like as well here let me do Ernst Krennic I'll select some different ones if anybody has a favorite. And it is it will get a little bit um, chaotic in here as all the videos play together to really create this cacophony of chaotic sound to, and uh, mosaic together. It looks like the other ones are not clicking. Am I? Here we are, now they're showing up. And then you can play them and readjust them however you like. You can delete ones, you say, you can like this. And so everyone has their own, um, you can go directly to the YouTube page. But every, every mosaic that is created will be as unique to the user as, um, as each person visits the, the work. So I hope that was a brief, I, I'm, Daniel will, will have a much better presentation of this, and I believe he'll be joining us tomorrow. So without, um, without holding everyone up uh, much longer, I want to thank everyone for coming today. And I want to encourage you to please come tomorrow. Please invite your friends and then the RSVP link. We would love to have everyone. We'll have another panel tomorrow, as well as a curator's roundtable with myself, my three colleagues who, uh, helped, uh, who participated in this uh, exhibition, uh, Gina Cortopassi, Livia Benedetti, and Marcela Vieira, as well as Dini Gregor, our keynote speaker from today, and Nancy Perloff, one of our panelists from today, who are also curators in their own, as you saw, in their own right. Um, so please join us tomorrow. And quickly, I want to thank you once again. Uh, thank our, our sponsors, the Consulate General of Brazil in Montreal, Figura Ente de Concordia, Aquarela Publications, the Electronic Literature Lab, who is also hosting the Zoom for us and re running it and making sure that everything goes smoothly. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Dini and Holly. Uh, thank you to the GREN, the CRIN, and of course, the Electronic Literature Organization and the Board of Directors. Another big thank you to our presenters, Kate, Laura, Stephen, Livia, Nancy, Marce Marcelo, Eduardo, Patricia, and Dini. Did I forget anyone? I think that was everyone. <laughs> and again, once again, thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.